Hello everyone, welcome to another video on CompTIA A plus exam question series. This is video 6 in this series. So let's get started. The first question is that which of the following solutions provide the triple A functionality? So triple A stands for authentication, authorization and accounting. And the options are, we have to select two answers. The options are CHAP, TechX plus, PAP, RADIUS and MS CHAP, Microsoft CHAP. And the correct answers are TechX plus and RADIUS. So these solutions are usually used for authentication, authorization and accounting of network devices. Uh, so uh, this works such that, that we have, uh, let's suppose, a TechX or a RADIUS server. Let's suppose this is a TechX server. And uh, then we have network devices. Let's suppose this is a network device. This is a network device. And here, let's suppose we have an administrator. So whenever the administrator want to log into this device, this his username is authenticated from this TechX Plus server. And then again, authorization means that he, uh, this server can allow that which commands he can uh, run on this network switch and uh, how much access is, uh, how much access can be given to this specific admin or specific user. Accounting means that all his commands, all his action, when he logs in, when he logs out, all are recorded inside a log file on this server. So this is uh, the functionality of AAA and we use TechX and RADIUS server for this functionality. Question number two is that which of the answers listed below refer to the protocol and port number used by spam filter? Options are, we have to select two answers. The options are HTTPS 23 SMTP 443 Telnet and 25 and the correct answers are SMTP simple mail transfer protocol and the port number 25 so for spam filter we use the uh, simple mail transfer protocol and this protocol in fact uses the port number TCP port number 25 question number three is that a physical network device or software solution designed for managing the optimal distribution of workload across multiple computing resources is known as the options are content filtering, content filter, proxy server, load balancer and domain controller. And the correct answer is load balancer. So as the name indicates, load balancer balances the load among different workloads. Question number four is that in computer networking, a computer system or application that acts as an intermediary, intermediary, intermediary between another computer and the internet is commonly referred to as, the options are a bridge, active hub, server and proxy. And the correct answer is a proxy. So a proxy works such that, that let's suppose if uh, here we have a client, let's suppose you have a Firefox browser that a user is uh, using on this client and then you want to access let's suppose uh, some website let's suppose it is YouTube so let's suppose this YouTube is banned in uh, your country let's suppose you are living uh, we can say that in a country X and this YouTube is not allowed inside country X so you can do such that there are proxy servers. Let's suppose this is proxy. So you can do such that first you can go to the proxy server and then you can go to the YouTube. So the YouTube server uh, won't know that you are coming from this X country rather than it will consider the request from the country Y. And so in, in such way, you can access this uh, prohibited website. This is one example or one use of the proxy server. So it is, uh, it stands in between the client and the server. 
Question number five is that which of the following answers refers to industrial and manufacturing control system? The options are EDR, CMS, SCADA, and MDM. And the correct answer is SCADA. Question number six is that an emerging field of new technologies such as wearable tech or home automation is known as the options are SOC, NFC, IoT, and ESN. And the correct answer is IoT, also known as Internet of Things. So when you see the home automation or smart homes, then you should know that IoT and smart home or home automation are related and IoT devices are basically used in smart home and home automations. Question number seven is that what allows to determine which network segment an IP address belongs to? Options are physical address, dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP address resolution protocol and subnet mask. And the correct answer is subnet mask. So the subnet mask, uh, from the subnet mask, you can know that the, uh, the network segment and it uh, basically shows you, let's suppose we have a subnet mask 255.255.255.0 so this whole section shows the uh, network portion and this uh, portion shows the host it means that we can have 24 hosts and let's suppose if we have the network 192.168.1.0 so this denotes the network and this variable it goes from let's suppose 0 to we can say 255 but the first and the last address are not used so the 254 addresses these are used for host while this portion is used for network question number eight is that in a network using subnets the term default gateway refers to a network device that enable exchange of data between host residing in different subnets so the correct answer is true yes if uh, you are using the same network let's suppose i have two pcs and their ip addresses are 192.168.1.2 and the second one is 192.168.1.5 then in order to communicate both these you don't need the default gateway but if you have a third PC which IP address is 192.168 and 100.1 then you need to give these PC default gateway. So in order to communicate with dissimilar network you give default gateway to the hosts. Question number 9 is that which of the answers listed below refers to a network device providing an entry point to another network or the internet. The options are hub, switch, proxy server and gateway. And the correct answer is again the gateway. So as the name indicates, gateway is gateway to another network or to the internet. Question number 10 is that which of the following answers answers lists data required for manual configuration of network adapter setting and we have to select all options the options are IP address subnet mask default gateway MAC address DNS server address and SSID and the correct answer is the IP address subnet mask default gateway and DNS server and this is a typical example of uh, this configuration you all have must have used this that uh, for manual network configuration you need to give the IP address its subnet mask its default gateway and the DNS server question number 12 is that IP version 4 addresses are expressed with the use of options are octagonal and octagonal numbers binary numbers hexadecimal numbers and decimal numbers and the correct answer is the decimal number such as 192.168 and 1.10 these are all decimal numbers 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 11 इज एन आई पी आई पी वर्जन फोर एड्रेस कंजिस्ट ऑफ 32 बिट्स 48 बिट्स 64 बिट्स एंड 1 टू 8 बिट्स एंड द करेक्ट आंसर इज 32 बिट्स क्वेश्चन नंबर 13 इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आंसर्स रेफर्स टू एन आई पी वर्जन फोर लूप बैक एड्रेस एंड यू द आंसर द ऑप्शन आर दन दिस IP version 6 hexadecimal address this is also IP version 6 address 169.254/16 and 127.0.0.1 and the correct answer is 127.0.0.1 this is the loop back address used in IP version 4 question number 14 is that which of the following answers refer to the characteristics characteristic features of the 10000-10.255.255.255 or we can uh, you uh, denote is 10.0.0.0/8 ip version 4 address space so the question is that what is this address space uh, the uh, we have to select two answer the options are is it class a range public ip address range class b range non routable private ip address range and class c range and the correct answers are that it is class a range and non routable private ip addresses so this address range belong to class a and uh, and this ip address range is non routable it means that we cannot use these addresses on internet this can only be used inside private addresses just uh, just as uh, just as we use 192.168 1.0 address space in the same manner we can use 10.10. let's suppose 1.0/24 these both can be used inside our homes in private ip addresses while they cannot be used on internet because they are not routable over the internet Question number fifteen is that which of the following answers listed below refer to the one seven two sixteen dot zero zero dash one seven two dot thirty one dot two five five dot two five five or one seven two sixteen zero zero slash twelve IP version four address space? We have to select two answer. The options are class A range, public IP address range, class B range, and non routable. Private IP range and the last option is Class C range. And the correct answers are this is Class B range, and as in the uh, just like the previous question, it is this address space is also private address space, and this is non-routable over the internet. Question number sixteen is that what are the characteristic features of one nine two one six eight dot zero dot zero dash one nine two one six eight dot two five five dot two five five, or one nine two one six eight dot zero dot zero slash sixteen IP version four address space? We have to select two answers. The options are: is it class A range? Is it public IP address range? Is it class B range? Is it non-routable private IP address range? And is it class C range? so the options are yes again just like the other two address ranges this is also private and non routable address range it is private we all have used this type uh, address range in our homes in our wifi devices 192.168 1.0 100.0 these all are same and the second option is that it is class c so again to sum up The 10.0.0.0/8. This was class A, and this was also private. And the 172.16.0.0/12. This is class B, and this is also private. And this 192.168.0.0/16. This is class C, and this is also private. So these all three address ranges are private and these ranges uh, these uh, ranges are uh, belongs to class a class b and class c question number 17 is that nip version 6 address consists of 32 bit 
48 bits, 64 bits and 1 to 8 bits and the correct answer is 1 to 8 bits. Uh, 32 bit was IP version 4 and 48 bits this is uh, in fact the length of the MAC address. So the correct answer is 1 to 8 bits. IP, question number 18 is that IP version 6 addresses are expressed with the use of call, with the use of which options we have following option decimal numbers, hexadecimal numbers, binary numbers and octagonal numbers and the correct answer is hexadecimal numbers. So IP version 4 it, will, it was denoted with the decimal numbers wise IP version 6 is denoted with hexadecimal numbers. Question number 19 is that a double colon in, in an IP version 6 address indicates that part of the address containing only zeros has been compressed to make the address shorter. So the question means that the colon is used to compress the IP version 6 address to compress the zero. It means that we can denote these four zero into this uh, using this column and the answer is yes true we can do uh, we can do 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 it question number 20 is that which of the following answers lists a valid IP version 6 address of this IP address after compression so the answers uh, the options are this is option 1 2 3 and 4 and the correct answer is this one so here we have compressed all the zeros into this column. Then again the leading zero, they are also eliminated here before a the leading zero are eliminated. Again uh, these zeros, these four zero are denoted by this single zero and uh, that, that's all. Question number 21 is that which of the following answers refer to IP version 6 loopback addresses? We have to select two answers. The options are 127.0.0.1, 0, 0, colon, 0, colon, 0, up to 1, and then 169.254 slash 16, colon, colon, 1, and FE80, colon, colon, slash 10. So this, this was the loopback address IP of IP version 4 so this cannot be the answer so the correct answer are this 0 colon 0 colon 0 up to 1 and colon colon 1 so this again we can compress this into this so they, they both are one and the same thing Question number 22 is that which of the following answers listed below refers to a permanent assignment of an IP address. Options are private address, private IP address, dynamic IP address, public IP address, and static IP address. And the answer is static IP address. So when you assign a static IP address, this means that it is permanent unless you yourself change it again. It won't change uh, for himself as opposed to the dynamic address which are assigned through DHCP. The IP addresses that are assigned to DHCP, they can change. And that's all for today. I hope you people have learned something from today's video. So if you haven't subscribed till yet, so please subscribe and stay tuned, stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you.